Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you that uh, we're in your house this evening. Lord, I just thank you for what this evening, uh, what it represents to us. Lord, that you just came to be born just to give your life for us, Lord, and just a free gift of salvation. Lord, that the only way to God is through you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for that, Lord, that it's a free gift. We just need to receive you into our lives, into our hearts, Lord, and we're, we'll be with you forever. Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. I just pray now as we just... Um, just celebrate your birth this evening, Lord, that you just open every one of our hearts, Lord, just to turn off everything outside this building for a while, Lord, and just bask in your glory. And Father, I pray as we give your, our tithes and offerings now, Lord, you just receive them and multiply them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So just a couple things. Uh, we will not be having our service tomorrow. And then our uh, New Year's Eve service will be the same time next week, Saturday evening here at 5 o'clock. And then we will not have a New Year's Day service either. So, and then no Wednesday evening service this week. So we've got tonight, we've got next Saturday at 5 o'clock for our New Year's Eve service. And then we'll start back up the following Wednesday evening and then back to that. And then we will also not be having our potluck this month because, well... We may have it a little bit later in the, uh, in the month, but we may just wait till February as well. So more to come on that. So, all right. Thank you. So glad to see everybody this evening. Joy, sweet joy. 
come thou day spring come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O moon, desire the nations bind in one. Of all mankind, did thou our sad division cease? And by thyself, our King of Peace, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. For us, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of this increase of his and of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Oh, uh -huh.
the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be barren in her sixth month is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. 
He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever. Even as he has said to our fathers, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect plan? The sleeping child you're holding is a great I am. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to his son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to his son, and he gave him the name Jesus. God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ 
that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Oh, holy child. 
to us we pray cast out our sin and enter in be born in us today we hear the Christmas angels the great glad tidings tell oh come to Abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. We got two more. Oh. <laughs> Come, they told me, pa rum pa pum pum. Born king to see, pa rum pa pum pum. Our finest gifts we bring, pa rum pa pum pum. To lay before the king, pa rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum. I am a poor boy too, ba rum pa pum I have no gifts to bring, ba rum pa pum To lay before the king, ba rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum Shall I play for you, pa rum pa pum pum, on my drum? Mary nodded, pa rum pa pum pum. The ox and lamb kept time, pa rum pa pum. My drum for him, pa rum pa pum pum. I played my best for him, pa rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum. Then he smiled at me, pa rum pa pum pum. Me and my drum. Three. 
there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph. time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in, in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for, for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was, said, what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the word and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was very old. 
She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done all everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who made green with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? Yes, this is Christ the King. Shepherds, guard, and angels sing. Here's place to bring him love, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate? Where Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. When they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, 
they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt. When he stayed there until the death of Herod, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they were no more. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we drive us afar field and fountain more and mountain following yonder star Gold I bring to crown him again, King forever ceasing, never over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, prayer and God on high, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Herod had died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. If the ushers will come forward, we'll uh, pass out the communion elements now. Right. 
Scriptures tell us that um, we shouldn't take communion in any unworthy manner because we could be taking it and you know doing a judgment against ourselves. Communion is one of those um, sacred things that we're called to do as Christians. It's something that we're doing to remember Christ and what He came to Earth to do for us. Born of a baby, to go to the cross for to pay the sins for all mankind. Regardless of whether or not we accept that free gift or not, he still died for all of us. And I believe he would have died for just one of us, knowing that if only one person in all the world would come to salvation through him, I still believe he would have went to the cross. Let's take just a moment just to just kind of meditate on this evening, meditate on the birth of Christ. If there's something you've got going on inside you that you just need to just make right with the Lord right now, just do that. Let's just take just a moment in silence. It says, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread... And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just can't thank you enough, Lord, just for, for coming to this world. Knowing the reason you came to this world was to die for us and to go to the cross, to pay for our sins, to reconcile us back to your Father. Because it was sin that separated us. And it was only the perfect blood of your sacrifice that could reconcile us back to your father, our father. And Lord Jesus, by just receiving your gift of what you did for us on that cross, we will stand holy, blameless, and pure before your father, our father, because of what you did on the cross. Lord, I thank you that you went to the cross, Lord. I thank you that you allowed yourself to be beaten. You took our punishment upon yourself. The sins of the world you took upon yourself. May we forever be grateful for that. In your precious name, amen. You may take the bread.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, again, you shed your blood for us. Lord, it's your shed blood that washes us clean. Lord, the gift is free. We don't earn it. We can't work for it. We couldn't pay for it if we wanted to. But you offer it up to all of us, salvation through your blood. That all we need to do is accept you as our Lord and Savior, and we'll be with you for an eternity. Lord, I thank you for the shedding of your blood. Lord, I just, I just can't fathom, Lord, what you went through, voluntarily went through for us. Lord, may we forever be grateful for that. Just praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may take the cup. Well, we're going to leave you with a song um, tonight. That is a very old, old song. And, uh, uh, but it's a very timely song. It's actually called Christmas Song for All Year Round. And um, so we just wanted to share this with you.
Well, let's hear it for the readers tonight. Great job. And uh, God bless you guys. Have a very merry, merry Christmas. And don't forget about our New Year's Eve service next week, and uh, we'll see you then.